Are, are you surprised? Um, he started Allen a bunch of times, you know, this series, and I'm like, this yeah. guy's getting cooked pretty much every liability time. outside of liability. outside of game one. On yeah, outside of game one, I'm like, this, this you know, Jalen Brown's taking advantage of this dude every single time he's on the court. Yeah, this is that was barbecue chicken, like Shaq would say. Sorry to <laughs> no. you some, but like in the words of Shaq, that him freaking matched up and trying to guard JB was barbecue chicken. That's slow. You're right. Honestly, that that's 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 on the coach. But I mean, he struggled, man. I mean, the story of this series, if they went down, would have been Jason Tatum is not ready for prime time. And he mm. completely flipped the script on that with his game six performance. Uh, and that's it. I just, I think Miami lacks the firepower um, against the Celtics is really what it comes down to in the simplest form. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Guarantee himself, man. Oh, uh, you know, you know, screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it. Ma ma matter of fact, you can put this on record and you can blast and come at me for, you know, if we don't end up winning, you can put it on me. I guarantee the Boston Celtics will win this series and go to the NBA Finals without question. Yeah. 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 Pro Fan Sports Podcast. Let's get it. Pro Fan. Pro fan. Tune into the program. program. Every single week, get the dope, fam. Sean on the mic, very flat, too. You know Keep you updated, that's what we do. Yeah, Pro yeah. Fan. Tune into the program. Pro Fan. Tune into the program, pro fan. Tune into the program. Every single week, get the dope, fam. Yo, 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 what to do, everybody? It's your boy John Altador with Pro Fan Sports Podcast. Back at you with another one. And today I got my boys Barry and Vlad. Couldn't be here today because we got something going on. And then we got senior VP and content director at CLS, CLNS Media. John Zanis, man. How you doing, brother? What's up, guys? Thank you for having me on. Thank you for coming on, man. Yep. Absolutely. Um, Thanks for joining us and being here. We yeah, really man. Appreciate it. It's an honor. We got, we got stuff to talk about. There's a lot going yeah, on. Sure Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. Yeah. I think, um, you know, we just came off the Celtics, you know, advancing into uh, the Eastern Conference Finals. You know, I think a couple of days ago after we lost game five, you know, a couple of us probably were a little nervous about what, you know, what was about to happen. I, I thought we were, you know, um, with the Bruins going into game seven and, and the Celtics, I'm like, we could have a really bad weekend in Boston, man. And um, Boston Celtics came through and saved the day for us, you know, advancing into the Eastern Conference Finals against, uh, well, we're going against the Miami Heat, but we just played the Bucks, man. Um, what was your thoughts on the, thought on the series, John? Yeah, I mean, so uh, you know, uh, I thought the Celtics were going to win the series. I really did. Uh, but you know, one thing Milwaukee did. There's two things Milwaukee had going for it. Uh, they like the Celtics make it hard on you. You know, so it, it's the, these games were rock fights. You know, they were really tough to get going. But as you could see, almost every game, even when the Celtics were playing at their absolute worst, and credit Milwaukee for causing some of that. It's not all self-inflicted. I think in some cases, Celtics did slip into bad habits. You could see that the Bucks could almost never separate. Um, and that was kind of encouraging. Even the games where you felt you were watching and the Celtics were doing everything wrong, all the stuff you hate to see, uh, you know, no pace, ISO, ball, not moving the ball around, you know, just, uh, you know, just these things, turning the ball over without pressure and you're watching and you're like oh my god they're playing horribly but then you look up and it's only a four point game and a five point game and that kind of made me feel as the series was going on I was like I just I don't think the Bucks the Middleton factor was huge they just didn't have that guy they couldn't separate they couldn't turn an eight or nine point lead into 15 17 18 see you later you know it just they weren't able to do it all series long At the end of the day is pretty lopsided I think the average margin of victory is like 17 double digits 17 18 points in the four Celtics victories to yeah. 20 something point games. I I I felt like the Celtics best was always better than the Bucks best again 
the caveat being without Middleton, there just wasn't enough scoring there, you know, and that was what it came down to. You needed Giannis to go for 40 plus every single night for Milwaukee to have any chance of being in it. They just, they didn't have the firepower to keep up. The Celtics defense is too good. Uh, and I just, I felt that Boston was going to win even down three, two, of course, any game, each game was different. There was really no momentum carrying over from game to game. So it's hard to guess what was going to happen there. I feel like the Celtics could have laid an egg in game six. I just, I felt that they were the better team this series. And the more you watched it, I, I actually got more confident, even though it did look a little difficult at times. And it did look like, you know, Milwaukee was causing them problems. Uh, unlike our, you know, one of my co-hosts, Bobby Manning over at the Garden Report, who got really panicky after game five, uh, the rest of us kind of kept it calm. I, I, I did think the Celtics were going to prevail. Uh, and, uh, and they did. Again, Middleton plays could be a different series. Uh, but also, again, Celtics missed starters, you know, five games with uh, either Williams or Smart out. So, again, that, that, that made a difference, too. I, I mean, I completely agree because I think even even the games that we lost, you know, um, we went up, you know, by double digits in each of those games. And somehow we just right. we just let the league go, you know, um, and I, I knew we had the better team the whole time. Um, I mean, Giannis, unbelievable. Love the guy. You know, it's, there's nothing more you, you could have done. He could have done. You know, he played unbelievable, you know, try to get his teammates involved in every single one of the games. And unfortunately, those guys, they were all pretty much playing out of position and, you know, asking them to do a little too much. You know what I'm saying? And um, they just you could see it. But Bud was searching for the right lineup all the way until like the fourth quarter of game seven, just couldn't figure out what's the right combo of players here because they just couldn't, should I go three big? Am I trying this Allen thing? Should I play more Portis, more con? They couldn't friggin' figure it out the whole time. They couldn't find that right matchup to be able to generate points and create matchup problems with the Celtics. They just, they were too good. Are, are you surprised? Um, he started Allen a bunch of times, you know, this series. And I'm like, this yeah. guy's getting cooked. Pretty much every liability you know, outside liability. of outside liability. of game one. On yeah, outside of game one, I'm like, this, this you know, Jalen Brown's taking advantage of this dude every single time he's on the court. Yeah, this is that the, was barbecue chicken, like Shaq would say. Sorry to <laughs> no, you from, but like in the words of Shaq, that him freaking matched up and trying to guard JB was barbecue chicken. That's slow. You're right. Honestly, that that's 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 on the coach. That's slow to react. You have to recognize when something isn't working and move away from it. Um, and it wasn't working. I mean, he was brutal all series long, and it was evident early. I just don't know. I think they wanted to get secondary scoring going so badly, and that was the guy to provide it, um, that they just – tried to keep making it happen and it just never worked I actually thought because of that and you know credit to Wesley Matthews for being able to play the defense he played on Tatum uh earlier in the series Unbelievable. he did yeah. look like he I know that was crazy like he that, stepped that was... into a time machine I didn't expect that but you could see he wore down as the series went on and they yeah. were able to hunt that matchup but I thought they'd be able to hunt matchups all game long uh with those guys and, and just be able to attack them and exploit them. I do think that Celtics got thrown off by just how formidable uh, Milwaukee was in the paint and playing their drop coverage. And they were trying to force it in early. It wasn't working. They got really deterred. And then they didn't want to go in there anymore. They were driving the paint only to kick. They were passing up layup opportunities. It definitely kind of messed with their mojo. But uh, I thought they'd be able to attack those matchups. And certainly Allen. And they did eventually. And they played him off the court. I mean, he was basically unplayable. Absolutely, man. You Absolutely. think um, oh, yeah, there was. Jason Tatum kind of adjusted pretty well, you know, against that. Because I feel like the first couple of games, it was kind of hard for him to, to figure out, you know, with, with Matthews playing the way he was playing. You know, he just couldn't get inside at all. You at know, all. And, and as the series went on, it just like he seemed to like figure it out, you know, as it was going on. It's like, hey, I see what's going on now. Now I can make a couple moves. And and it seemed like even Milwaukee Bucks, they kind of like started backing off from double teaming him the whole time. Yeah, they, um, he definitely started to figure it out. I think again, I mean, it's just one of those, Tatum's one of those guys, right? Where, you know, it's not the quality of shot necessarily. It's just whether it's going in. Difference yeah. between early season Tatum and late season Tatum is just more shots fell. Um, and it was, you know, I mean, I, I think he was playing smarter. He's moving the ball a little bit more, you know, less ISO stuff. But Tatum, 
he, Tatum's such a strange guy because he just he still falls into these bad habits, not just game to game, almost possession to possession. You'll watch one game, he'll do everything right, and it's going great. And then all of a sudden, he just goes kind of into this mode where he just starts doing whatever, or he gets frustrated, or he tries to force the issue. I think he's always been a guy who just tries to shoot his way out of trouble, uh, out of problems and when things aren't going well. But I mean, he struggled, man. I mean, the story of this series, if they went down, would have been... Jason Tatum is not ready for primetime. And he completely flipped the script on that with his game six performance. Uh, and that's it. And then here we are. And then game seven, I game seven. I thought he was going to go for 50 again. He looked like he couldn't, move, he looked like he couldn't miss. If not for the foul trouble, I think he could have had another monster game, but uh, he completely changed the narrative with that game six performance because it was trending in the wrong direction with him. He was getting frustrated. He was forcing shots. He was missing shots. Uh, and it was affecting every part of his game. He wasn't getting back on defense. How many times did you see him still complaining and he wouldn't get back and they, they you know, Milwaukee would get a transition transition three or a bucket and it's just that oh. stuff you know and i and I, i'm on my show and i freaking all i always talk about that and everyone and all of our everyone in the chat and all of the commenters get so mad but it's like you got it's this the stage is too big to be doing that stuff you, you have to get rid of that and just you got to find you're not going to be perfect. You're going to miss shots. You're going to have days where you're cold, but you can't do that stuff, you know? And that's Jason Tatum drives me a little bit nuts with that stuff. Cause he's got all the talent in the world. Mm -hmm. He's just got to, he's got to quit it. I mean, I, I agree. I, I feel like, um, you know, that came back to bite him a little bit. I mean, yeah. that, that could have been really bad, you know, uh, game seven, because the, the frustration foul he took against uh, right? you know, holiday, you know, which gave him two fouls right. and, and in the game. Yeah, that was his later. third, and then he gave away the fourth, and then right. he had the fourth one on the offensive one that was the the, the and that took him out of the game. That could have been seven and a half minutes in the third. They had to play without him because of that bad foul you just mentioned. Yeah, uh, that so, could have been that could have swung the game and obviously the series. Oh yeah, yeah. no, without question, absolutely, no question about it. I mean, he definitely. Yeah, that was that was so hand. frustrating and maddening to. To see, and that's I'm sure the only issue we'd have with uh, with, with, with Tatum and stuff, which, and, which is crazy I, considering how good he was against Brooklyn, right? Like he was almost perfect. Yeah. No, oh, for sure, for sure, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, but the thing that's really in, you know impressed me about you know the Celtics, particularly this series, is how good their role players, you yeah. know, were, and how you know they really stepped up. And really, you know, in the biggest stage and the you know the brightest lights, they rise to the occasion, took their game to the next level, and took you know advantage of how the you know Bucks were were playing them, uh, and particularly Grant Williams, like we saw yesterday, have you know the big game, twenty seven uh, points, uh, seven threes, uh, you know was you know tied well for most threes in a game seven with Steph Curry, which is unbelievable, uh, but. Yeah, that that was you know amazing to me, and then you know Pritchard did his thing too. Definitely can't um mention him. He hit as many threes as the whole Bucks team did. I think he had like four threes, and the whole Bucks all together hit four threes. But I think Grant Williams was really um a star in his role and had a really good um series, with the exception of a couple of games where he was you know pretty bad and you know was really hesitant and not you know confident. And you know, in his shot, and and I think that kind of you know haunted him and, and bit him in the ass to say the least. But I really think we saw the importance of you know to this team and and what he brings yeah. to the table and how valuable that 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 really is. Grant only be able to make shots yeah. on the offensive end, but also be the um you know primary defender on the, you know, defensive end against Giannis so that those other guys aren't getting in, you know, in foul trouble, you know, as much or as easily. So, I mean, and I think he said he was focused on guarding, you know, Giannis in, on defense a couple of those games and that kind of, um, you know, affected right. his offense and affected, you know, him, you know, shooting the ball and, um, you know, and, and being able to make shots. But, uh, yeah, it was just amazing, guys, the defensive game plan for the um, Bucks, because like I don't get it. Like they were just legit giving him open threes, but that's what they do. Wrong, and he's a forty percent three point shooter. Like what kind of like 
film or scouting report do you guys have? What 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 games are you watching? Like Grant Williams is one of the best three point shooters on the Celtics without question, and it was just astonishing that time yeah. and time again they just kept leaving him open and you know. And just letting him but shoot. But that's their <laughs> defense. It's not just how they defended the Celtics. That's how they were all year. They gave up, I think, more threes. They allowed more three-point attempts than I think any team or they're one of the top uh, teams in the league in that. That's just how they play their defense. They play that drop coverage. They, uh, you know, they, 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 they try to get the shooter. They try to make it so the other team's shooters, non-shooters, are open because they'd rather have those guys shooting then, uh, you know, guys whose names start with, you know, J-A-Y. So it was really the defense was anybody but Jalen and Jason. Uh, and we're fine with that. And they try to, you know, they try to limit the corner threes and force these guys to shoot above the break threes. And they'll give them to them all game. And then early on, you saw Derek White couldn't hit, Daniel Tice couldn't hit, and Grant couldn't hit early. So it was kind of working. Um, I'm That's glad, true. though, I'm glad that Ime, uh, and you know, because uh, what happens to shooters, particularly somebody like Grant Williams, when you've shot a bunch and you miss, you're like, I'm Grant Williams. I'm not Jason Tatum. Am I supposed to be shooting 20 <laughs> field goal attempts? You know, and you start to pass open or, or looks, but that's not, you can't do that. It, it, Grant Williams, it, Derek White is not out there to hit threes. Neither is Daniel Tice. No, they are out, if they are open, and the ball has swung and you're late in the clock and that's the best shot you can get on that possession, yes, you want them to take it. But Grant Williams actually is out there for people to drive and kick to. He is out there to be the shooter you look for on the wing when he is av when he's available. So he has to shoot it because the, the whole offense breaks down if you're working to, 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 to get an open look, to get Grant Williams open, to drive and to kick to him and then have him pass it up. That he had to, so I'm glad that he did, and obviously I'm glad it started going in uh, because that's that's part of the design. He, the reason he's starting, the reason he's playing, is because he shot 40 percent from three during the course of the year. If he doesn't do that, he's probably playing less minutes. Yes, he's valuable on defense, but the offense needs secondary scoring, uh, particularly from the bench guys. And I know he's been starting uh, in Rob's absence, so he had to shoot it, and and I'm glad that he did. And obviously, you know, he had his as everyone likes to say, his Kelly Olenek game, and it's going to go down, and people will remember this game seven from Grant Williams, you know? Grant Williams game. Yeah, yep. it came Mr. Corner Three, as I like to call him. It's awesome. It's awesome. It was so fun to watch, too. And what's funny is, as he was taking the other ones later in the game, uh, he cooled off a little bit after that stretch. Each one that each one that was launched, you could tell the place was ready to <laughs> freaking oh, right. lose oh, yeah. it. And, and they, they, they didn't all drop, but then Pritchard, Pritchard nailed a couple, and that kind of picked it up. But that was, you know, they need the scoring. Those guys, that's their job. When Pritchard and Grant are out there, if they have open looks, they're supposed to take those. And when they go in, it, you know, the Celtics are tougher to beat when they're getting that type of contribution from the bench. It, you mentioned the bench, too, and I'll just give a quick shout out. Derek White is a guy I've been pretty critical of. Um, yeah, and too. <laughs> yeah. And so we have to. Oh, yeah, we've been calling him out on here. No doubt. And so, you know, you watch a game like that and it's just like, oh, man, one for 10 again. Yes, I, it's not. I, I get it. It's not all about scoring. There's a million different things that he does. I thought even his low scoring games, a lot of that stuff showed up in this series more so than more so than others. Um, I saw one stat where I think with him on the and honestly, when he discovered that lineup and he started going to the uh, to Derek White and a smaller lineup to close, uh, it really made a difference. That was their best lineup out there. Uh, smart, one big, usually Al in this case, because Rob was out and then. The Jays, Smart, and White was the best lineup that they put on the floor, uh, and and it really gave the Bucks fits uh, with their ability to switch and the way that they were playing defense was incredible. I think the, I think I saw a stat: the Celtics' net rating was almost plus twenty with Derek White on the floor and negative with him off of it. So he was. It's not all him, but he was part of a unit that absolutely ended up being the key to, to the series once they discovered it and started going to it uh, often. It was almost, I'm not going to say it's a blessing Rob was out, but I think it was something born from necessity uh, that they had to go to, and it really, really worked for them. So uh, I thought White played great, even though he shot really poorly in that game seven, but he did have a couple of games where he scored necessary, you know, where he gave them a boost offensively from the bench too, and that was big. 
Yeah, I, th I think it's just more noticeable when everybody's hitting certain shots and then you got the one guy yeah. that's just like can't hit anything. And, you know, it, it and they're open. And it's, it's, open. And it's, and it's like, wide open. It's like, what yeah. is happening? I you know. know. It, it, <laughs> and, we, and you know They're how good it. shots, but they just don't go in enough. And it's frustrating yeah. to watch it, right? Hey, he broke right, out right. up a little bit. And, and you know, I, I don't think we win the game. We win a couple of those games without him, and you know, it's more and more credit to him. Yep. You know, um, one thing for sure is Mike Budenholzer. Uh, prior to last year, you know, the knock on him was him not being able to adjust, right? And then he went on to win the the championship. I think a lot of people thought he was going to be fired last year if he didn't win the. If they lose to Brooklyn, he would have been fired. Yeah. Almost right. certainly. Kyrie and Harden, absolutely. I he agree would, with that. If he, lost, if he lost that Brooklyn series, I don't think he'd be the coach. And then he ends up being a champ. So they're back with a mediocre coach this year, and you just got to live with it. Because, right, you're not firing a coach after he won a, after he won a title. Right. right. You know, and, and it, it just had me thinking. I'm like, man, is this guy back to, you know, what he was doing before? He's all right. He's he, all right. He's fine. He just... He just was not adjusting to the threes, no. man. and it's like a lot of people are like, "Man, Grant's taking him." It's like, dude, he's wide open. What do you want him to do? You know what I'm saying? It's like that—that's what he's out there to do. And you know, he—he's what uh, Semi Ojale was supposed to be doing out here. And now, oh come on, yeah, yeah, don't even yeah. say Semi Ojale. <laughs> we have no idea what that guy's doing now. He apparently was on the Bucks. I was on the Bucks. Bucks him to he, he got waved, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he must have got waived because I didn't even see him on the bench. I don't even think he's on the team, but I know the Bucks signed him in the offseason. And it's funny because he thought he had a chance to crack their rotation when pretty much their rotation was already set and they pretty much brought most of the guys back that they had um, from last year with the exception of P.J. Tucker. Um, yeah, I, I swear, Semi Ojale's career was extended by two years simply because he had one <laughs> good stint of being able to body up and defend Giannis and Giannis, yeah. you know and everyone kind of the myth of semi Ojale is like a Giannis stopper and a defensive specialist was born but just it's never real but yeah I mean we joke about it but the Bucks bench depth the Bucks lack of uh, you know I mean lack of depth really killed them here um they just didn't have guys I mean I think I think again I 56 percent of their shot attempts came from uh came from uh uh uh, Giannis and Giroux, you know, it's just, they just weren't able to get, it's not only those guys weren't able to make them, they weren't even able to take them. The Celtics kind of switching defense there really makes it tough on those guys on the perimeter. No, nobody else on that team can create their, could create their own shot. And it, that it becomes really evident there. Um, just to how that's the Celtics defense is just so up in your grill. It takes really elite shot creators and shot makers to be able uh, to 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 generate offense against those guys. Unless the Celtics are having breakdowns, but they're not going to give up a bunch of open threes the way that they play defense. They're really good at it. I think they and actually Miami, uh, two of the best teams at defending the three all season long, and so Milwaukee just could never get those guys going. Yeah, I mean, I think Drew. Drew capable of creating some stuff but he just isn't good at shooting the ball man he, he's, he's not a, a terrific shooter yeah he's actually he's had a pretty good statistical year for by his standards but that's not who he is yeah. you know he's not yeah. he's it's not you know he, he's not a lights out shooter by any means but he, he's friggin' gritty as hell i love that guy right right and he's like a number three option he's like not a three offensively two. but he is a From an great player right, right. yeah offensively definitely number three but Number two, that's like you said, that's yeah. not his game. He's not really a scorer. Not, not meant to be, yeah. Um, even though I think the, he had some stretches where he was able to score, um, you know, offensively pretty well. But I feel like towards the end of the series, yeah. um, you know, he wasn't good. Even though he was unbelievable in game five, he won that game five for them and closed it out and was like, that's the best I've ever seen him. He looked like he was like in the finals last year. Drew He's Holland. an awesome player. I, I really have a lot of respect for him. Yeah, I think he's I think he's terrific. But again, you're right, miscast. He shouldn't he shouldn't be jacking twenty something shots a game. It's just not not the type of player he is. Not the type of player he's supposed to be. You know, More of an opportunistic yeah, scorer and a guy who helps facilitate. But yeah, um, you know, he's a guy who I think during the course of the season 
you know, with Milwaukee, since he's been here, he's averaging 13, 14 shots a game. He's jacking up 20 shots in this series. So it was necessary, but yeah, it's not, it's not exactly what he does. Again, credit to him last couple of years with Milwaukee playing with this team, his field, his three point field goal percentage has been around 40%. So he's been good, you know, but you're right. More of a number three. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, Credit to Milwaukee for taking it to, you know, seven games. And I think they prepared us very, very well for the next series here that's coming up um, yep. starting on Tuesday, uh, 8.30 with, uh, against Miami. You know, um, what are your thoughts on that series? I know this is probably going to be a bloodbath here, you know, against these two teams right here, you know, defensively capable teams. And then, um, yep. you know, uh, with the stars that they got over there, they got good shooting, good defense, and a good coach, man. What, what are you thinking about the next series? I mean, a lot of different things here. I do think here's a couple wild cards. We know Marcus Smart. We you know we found out, and uh, Josue Pavone actually, um, you know, from CLNS Media, uh, uh, saw it after the game. He had a boot on his right foot, uh, revealed by uh, Ime Udoka. He's got a midfoot sprain. Those things could be tricky. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Adrian Wojnarowski, I think, said there's a chance he plays in Game One, but he's questionable. So it's really hard to predict the series without knowing. If Smart and then Lowry, Kyle Lowry has also been a little banged up there, uh, are playing and what happens there. But let's just assume full health on both sides. You know, what the Miami does, it's totally different than the Bucks. You know, the Bucks clog the paint. They want you to beat them from three, and that's just how they play it. Uh, but Miami's much, much more adept, you know, and much, much better. At, um, at defending the perimeter. So the huge three-point advantage the Celtics had um, in that series over Milwaukee is something uh, that, you know, be tougher. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're, it's a smaller defense. They're definitely quicker, um, uh, you know, uh, and they've got a bunch of guys here that can defend the perimeter, even their bigs. P.J. Tucker playing as a big Bam Adebayo, those guys. They can get out there. So it'll be harder to get open looks um, for the Celtics. What I do think, though, is... Um, I do think the Celtics, what it's going to come down to is both teams, as you said, play good defense. Uh, the Celtics, though, have better high-end talent and guys who can, I, I just, I think Miami lacks the firepower um, against the Celtics is really what it comes down to in the simplest form. They're tough. They're pesky. They're well coached. They have some depth with Oladipo actually playing pretty well in Lowry's absence. And obviously Tyler Hero coming off the bench. Max Struess has been starting for him. He can knock down shots. That game that they played without Rob Williams with the two teams in the garden, that was a really, really tough game. I was actually at that game as a fan. Um, you know, one of the few I get to take in, but uh, that was tough. You could see, I mean, they, 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 they make you work for it, much like Milwaukee did, just in a bit of a different way. I just think at the end, you know, just my quick snapshot thought is um, – Miami doesn't have enough firepower um, offensively. They're a very middle of the pack team. You saw those games against Philadelphia when they just went ice cold. I think they scored 81 in one game. And like, I can't unsee that. Like their offense can You're be You're not pretty, doing that against the Celtics. Their, their offense could be pretty putrid. So the Celtics, as long as they play the type of defense they're used to, don't, you know, whatever. I, I just think they've got the offensive firepower um, you know, to be able to, you know, distance themselves from Milwaukee. I think Milwaukee's going to have a hard time keeping up. That being said, Spolster's a good coach. You know he likes to mix it up. He likes to throw zone at those guys. We've seen the Celtics go really, really cold, you know, trying to crack a zone, which they shouldn't be able, you know, which they should be able to, but that happens sometimes with them. So, again, it's really a matter of taking the Celtics out of their rhythm, you know, trying to take Jalen and Jason out of the rhythm. I just think those guys are going to be able to find matchups there uh, on the Miami side that they're going to be able to attack. Um, and I think you know, they'll ultimately prevail because, as I said, is it's just the higher-end talent. I just don't think Miami's got the firepower. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that, man, for sure. I definitely think we we have the better team, you know, um, all around. Uh, I mean, even though Miami has Jimmy Butler, who I think is probably – one of the two best players in this series, if not the best player in this series, you know, with, with his with his um efficiency and the way he scores the ball and, and his defense as well. So I think we're definitely in for it. But I think this is definitely a, a series that that is winnable for us. Um, and I think if we're doing everything that we're supposed to do, we could take this, you know, pretty early from from Miami. Yeah, I don't know, Barry, what do you think? 
Yeah, I know I'm I'm with you guys. Like I honestly expect the Celtics to win this series. Like there's no reason and no excuse to you know for them to make this them not to win this series. I don't want to say I guarantee that they'll win this oh, series. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Guarantee himself, man. Oh, uh, you know you know what? screw it, screw it, screw it, screw it. Matter of fact, fact, you can Put this on record and you can blast and come at me for, you know, if we don't end up winning, you can put it on me. I guarantee the Boston Celtics will win this series and go to the NBA Finals without question. Yeah. I feel as though... How many games? How many games? I I'm thinking six games. That that's what I'm thinking. Celtics and six. I just feel like, you know... The, with, with the Celtics, when they're playing at their best, it's better than Miami's best. I feel like the you know the my Celtics defense should be able to shut down and lock down, you know, when they're defending at a high level with that energy and intensity and effort that they have on that end. That should be able to shut down Miami's offense, even with the prolific shooting that they have because the Celtics, like we said, are one of the best three-point um, defensive teams that, you know, got uh, that three-point line. And, you know, being able to, you know, switch and stuff is good so that even when they do set the pick and um, roll and stuff, that's not going to face them, particularly with Bam out of bow. Because remember what killed them a couple years ago, guys, was that pick and roll with Bam out of bow and the Heat were running that all series long and there wasn't a damn thing we could do about it but now we have you know the size and the athleticism to be able to match up with that and so it shouldn't be an issue for us um and and we should be able to you know to handle that they do um i was just gonna say uh Spolstra scares me a little bit because i know he gives the celtics fits and always is throwing the kitchen sink at them and, you know, but with his, you know, zone defenses, like you guys mentioned, like hopefully, you know, we are able to figure out how to beat his zone. I think, you know, Ibe, Yudoka, will, and those guys will certainly be able to figure that out. But I just feel like, you know, that, you know, the, the, this is the Celtics yeah. time. And I feel as though that, like, there's, there's no – way we can lose it well there is a way obviously but we we shouldn't it's lose just it. different it's like but, yeah, th that stuff with bam that you're talking about it's just i i i know people are freaking out because it did feel like a cheat code they're just like there's celtics can't do anything about that but they're running pick and rolls against kemba walker and daniel tice and rob williams yeah. who wasn't ready for prime time at that time and was still lost you know and, and really didn't know what he was doing out there it's a different team uh you know it's totally different totally different team and as you said it's the size it makes a huge difference. You feel so much better about Al Horford being able to stand his ground. Uh, Ime Udoka said again in his press conference today, Rob Williams isn't even listed on the injury report. He's theoretically playing without any limitations. No that makes a difference. You know, that makes a big, big difference. There. I'm just not – Bam's great and can be really good. I'm just not – he's just not – it was such a problem in those 2020 conference finals. You just, is like, you, they had no answer anywhere on their roster there. Uh, and Miami could exploit that no matter what and just get these easy buckets. So you're working your ass off to play defense or to, to get a bucket against a tough defense there. And they just come the other way and just throw it up. And he just, you know, it was, it, that was really hard to watch. I don't think that that's going to be the same here. It's as you said, is Butler good enough offensively to carry an offense? No, I don't think no, so. No, he's not. He's not. They need everything. They need everybody. They're a team that really spreads the wealth. Um, and, you know, you've got Lowry and he's friggin' really good and he's a real pain in the butt. Talk about a pain in the butt series. These are two of the bigger pain in the ass opponents that you could face with Lowry and Butler. They're good. They're crafty. They know how to, you know, they, they, they know how to draw contact, how to get you in foul trouble, how to find open guys, you know, when to take the shots. They're just really smart good players and so again if Lowry plays I think it really makes a difference if he's limited or he's not playing and right now he looks iffy for game one so he is gonna be listed as out game one I know I saw that he's a, I, I thought that I thought I saw that so he's so that's gonna be interesting so I'm curious what happens with the smart thing I think if Lowry doesn't play smart does I don't think Miami's 
I, I think Miami's really undermanned. Uh, it's going to be really difficult for them. I just don't think they've got enough uh, to deal with the Celtics defense. They'd have to be, they'd have to just be red hot. And it, you know what? I mean, we've seen Ty- Tyler Hero's torch the Celtics. That's another guy you can't get it out of your head. You go back to his conference finals. Hero looked like he was like one of the 10 best players in the world in that series. He's not. He's not. He's good. And he had a really good year. But again, he's a guy. Yeah, right, right. He's a guy you should be able not you can almost play off the court because he's defensively he's not going to be able to hang. I mean, if Jalen Brown sees Tyler Harrow in front of him, green, <laughs> green friggin' light, man. Just go, go, Bobby go. Trick him. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, yeah, he's, attack he's, him he's, all freaking series long. Attack, attack, attack. Right. Yeah. Go right at him. Yeah, Hero makes friggin' Grayson Allen look like Marcus Smart. You know, like, is that the guy, <laughs> is that the guy uh, Jason Tatum was talking about when he said, you know, guys were guys were acting different in the bubble? Yeah. <laughs> he said that. Yeah. <laughs> That's what like, like, yeah. it was. I mean, he, he had, a, yeah, he definitely had a little sophomore slump, but he came back strong, strong, strong this year. But yeah, his sec, you're right. A bubble Hero versus next year Hero was kind of a different guy. But yeah, he's an excellent player. As you said, Struess, who the Celtics had and let him walk out the door um, for nothing. That's a bummer, too. I like that guy a lot. I watched him, you know, closely that game that I went to. And I was like, this guy can really play and he can shoot. Uh, they're just Miami, just like the Celtics. They, they play on a string. They're really well coached. They're not going to beat themselves. But as you guys said, and Barry, as you said it, the Celtics, Beth, Miami was really good all year. The Celtics, at least the second half of the year on, were great. And I just think that they're just they're, they they the Celtics level was higher than what Miami's was at any point in the season. So if the Celtics are playing anywhere close to that, I just don't think Miami can keep up. They're a pain in the ass. There's going to be moments in the series and entire games where you're like, God, it's going to be frustrating because they're good, man. They they play really hard. They have really good defense. They Mm -hmm. they make it they make it hard on you. The key is. You know, Tatum and Brown, play within yourselves. Don't try to do too much. Stick to the game plan. Don't get frustrated. They're they're trying really hard to throw you off your game. You just got to stay, you know, maintain focus. Yeah, I mean, J- Jason Tatum struggled a little bit in the last series to start the series. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I don't think I don't think Milwaukee had great defenders like that. But um, Miami does have one in um, P.J. Tucker. Um, how do you think he? He's old, so though. Come on. I don't think Tucker Tucker they can't stay with Tatum. Him. No, you don't, you don't, you don't think so. Him. You don't think he's that dog that can come in and you know lock, lock down one person on the team. I don't A think so. Year old guy shouldn't be locking down Jason Tatum. Come on, man. Like I know PJ Tucker's. You know what I'm saying. A good defender, and you know we know the toughness and the grittiness he brings. But come on, he shouldn't be able to guard and lock him up one on one. Us, maybe. And if he is, Jason Tatum's not the superstar that we all think, and is as good as we all think he is. If PJ Tucker is able to lock you down, like come on, we've been talking you up, Jason Tatum, all playoffs. You've been balling I- out. You've been. Phenomenal in playing. Now he's gonna Europe. drop. But he's gonna drop Butler. Tatum's Tatum's. Uh, you, uh, you know, body type alone. You're assuming that uh, that that PJ is gonna be chasing Grant Williams around, trying to keep him from shooting open threes. But again, there's gonna be a lot of switching. Miami switches too. I think Butler is the guy that Tatum's gonna see to start possessions. Who he ends up on, I don't know. And again, I do think that they are gonna hunt some matchups if they can get them um, as well there. But uh, you know, it's. That's kind of how I see it, assuming Grant stays in that starting rotation. For sure. And another thing is that that concerns me. Well, it doesn't concern me because, I mean, I'm not a Miami Heat fan, so I'm not concerned about one of them. But one of the things, Knox, that, you know, has been on them and that I've always, you know, looked at as as that, like, when the game is close, they don't really have a closer and a killer to you know, you know, to, to close the the game for them. Like I feel as though, like in close games, sometimes Jimmy Butler can be too passive and defer to those other guys too much when he should be more aggressive and assertive and, and attacking more. So I just you know, and I feel like there's definitely obviously going to be some close games in this series. So I've always like wondered when because we obviously know who the closes um are on the Celtics and Tatum and Brown when the game is close that's who you go to those are your big money guys and your you know closers and and guys that you know 
get you know get it done for you in crunch time down the stretch. But I just don't really see you know who would be those guys. But I mean, like Jimmy Butler has the potential to be that guy. But I feel like his game and the way he approaches those situations, you know, is just like you know he you know he he's just too deferential and and just like not you know what I'm saying and is yep. willing to give some to Tyler Heroes and the Max Struces and the Kyle Lowry's and all the other guys shots instead of taking him on himself and being that guy to close the game out and to, you know, you know, help them um, you know, seal that victory. So that's something that I've always noticed about the heat that, you know, really, you know, they they're, they're, they're lacking. Um you know, of and they continue to lack him, and I feel like that's gonna affect them in this series. It's it's again when the games are close in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I, I think again, it's the same thing I said about uh, the Milwaukee series. It's it's a, both to the Celtics and the Heat are are very capable of making other teams of making each other look bad. It's just whether or not this heat will do it more to the Celtics than the Celtics will do it to the heat. Um, it, you know, they, they cause a lot of turnovers. Um, you know, and that's, that's the thing that they do and the Celtics are prone to turnovers when things do get a little bit, a little frustrating. Um, the heat have a really deep bench, um, which uh-huh. obviously would be impacted when Lowry's not in there, but you've got guys on there, um, who contribute and you're, you are worried about losing those bench minutes there. Um, so, you know, they have have to be pretty Celtics need something from all of their guys there um if they're going to be able to 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 keep up because uh you know that's 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 an area if you if you go across the board and you do checks you know like who's got the advantage here and there it's pretty friggin' even you know I just think the firepower of Tatum and Brown is something that Miami can't find um and at the end of the day that's why I, I like them in that series I like them in this series absolutely same um, here man. I love them yeah yeah, I love you. Like I said, I guarantee that's a B money guarantee. <laughs> that's, I guess, all you need, right? Yeah. I, I'd agree with that right there. Um, one guy, you know, um, that that pretty much has been a no show for Miami, who gave us fits last time we saw them in the finals. You know, I think he got the you know the ninety million dollar bag. And yeah, I don't know. He's completely out of the rotation. What, what what is happening over there with him? I he did he hasn't been shooting as well. Um, and just defensively, he just kills them. But the fact that he's fallen so far out of the rotation without much of an explanation is amazing, right? Well, I've heard apparently the, what, the reason why he's fallen out of the rotation is the Max Struess kid, right? The, he's been yep. pretty much, <clears throat> excuse me, playing a much bigger role and has really taken his minutes and uh, and his playing time away in Duncan. Robinson, so that's really why they haven't played um, him as much because he can pretty much do what Duncan Robinson can do, and then he's I, really good on the defensive end. Like he's a good three and D guy, and something that Duncan Robinson didn't bring. Yeah, to the t- it's just the defense. It's I, you're right. I, I just they think they have better options because he's. I mean, he's killing them defensively. Um, and he's a liability, he, and he's up. such a liability, and they feel that they just they lose the minutes when he's out there. I mean, he this I but I again I don't get it. Game one against the Hawks, he comes out and hits friggin' eight or nine threes or something. Um, <laughs> and and, and, the, and, so, yes. and and the rest of the playoffs, I think he played. Yeah, it was a DNPCD for multiple games. He has nine Wait, points. He has nine points total the rest of the way. He is completely out you know completely out of the mix and the Miami's shooting has been what has, was they their shooting was bad against Philly um so right, right. you know you have this weapon on the bench and, and and a lot of people have to be thinking like how bad can the defense actually be get the guy out there it's the same thing early in the year when people were like you know when the Celtics couldn't shoot and everyone's like What's so bad about Sam Hauser? And it's again, it's a guy, 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 guy you know, like man, he's just guy can't guy, guy literally, you know, he he can't play a lick of defense. Otherwise, he'd be in the NBA. Right, Shooting yeah. is great. You got to be able to compete on that end, and I do think that that killed him here. But um, you know, I wonder if they can hide him, play him some minutes against you know the Celtics bench unit, and not get you know destroyed there. I expect him to play, and I expect 
and actually have a role. And that's another guy who oh, you feel so like. So he's going to get some playing time. I think he will. I think he will. I think they'll they got to pick and choose those spots there because you really can't have him out there at a time when both Jays are on the floor because one of them is going to find him, you know, um, and Every that's going right, to right, be bad. Right. Every time. You know, um, one thing I, I did really want to know is um, I did see the report about Marcus Smart with the with the mid foot foot sprain. Um, what what yeah, the hell did that mean? That? My like, fault. How did he injure that? I, I nobody has like clear video of it. I mean, the guy got kicked in the friggin' kicked in the balls, and he friggin' and he fell on oh, his yeah. face, oh, and yeah. he fell on his face. But neither one of those things is a foot, so I don't know what happened. But like as I said, Joe Sway saw him in the boot after the game. Celtics sent out a little kind of post game video of them celebrating the win, and you saw Marcus going on the tunnel. He was limping pretty bad, and like I said, he left in a uh, he left in that boot, and he may said it today, mid foot sprain. You're always worried about stuff like list Frank injuries and this and that. Those things can be tricky. Gordon had a friggin' foot sprain. He missed all this time. The way they're talking about it is more day to day rather than like multi game or you know week long absence. But I don't know if there's gamesmanship going on there and they're just kind of not tipping their hand and you know they don't expect him. I personally I wouldn't be stunned if we don't see him in those two games in Milwaukee. I mean in uh, Miami, but that's a straight guess. So don't hold me to that. I'm just it, it that's a tricky injury. It's not ideal. So I I, I don't know how that's going to go. You got to get in the hyperbaric chamber, you know. Start do something. Tonight, you know? Right, right, right. You know, yeah. get, get, get the T.O. treatment going on. Something, I don't know. For but, real, hit up huh? T.O., for real. Yeah. Just hit, hit him up, have him give you some tips and pointers on that. I'd right. se- I'll tell you that, that T.O. performance in the Super Bowl completely changed my overall opinion of him. What a dog he was in that oh game. Oh, my God. Show, showing up oh, there yeah. and, do- and, and playing the way he did. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, um, no so – who do you, who do you guys think will be an X factor for the Celtics? You know, coming in, in the next series. John, you know what's funny about that? I was literally about to ask that same question. You read my mind, bro. You must be psychic and have some sort of psychic powers and could be mis. Right there with you, man. <laughs> right there with you. Like yeah. no lie, I was about to ask that same question. No I, lie. I'm gonna say Rob because we haven't seen him, um, and it just. You haven't seen him. In, you haven't seen peak Rob in so long um, that you know. I I just feel like he's due for some sort of impact. It was you know I know he played sparingly in those couple of games. He came back much earlier than we thought in Brooklyn. Didn't really need him. Uh, he just hasn't looked like himself really at any point since returning. Uh, not fully and truthfully, they were better when he was off the court. Um, but I think they need him. Uh, and even if it's in a limited role of 15, 18 minutes. So I think what he's going to provide off the bench um, is going to be pretty big. Uh, I think he just, just simply taken away some Horford minutes um, a little bit there. Uh, and, you know, the, Al's, you know, uh, playing out of his mind in the playoffs, but he's also playing 40, 38, 41 minutes, just too much, you know? Yeah, I know. And you got a center, you really got to worry about a really athletic one who's going to frigging test you the whole time. You really need more than one person to be able to kind of lock that down. And so, uh, you know, nothing's going to be more challenging for Horford than what he did in round one, having to body up Giannis all game long. Adebayo's not as big a threat there. So, in fact, you know, I think it's a little easier and someone, and I think Rob can come in there. He can, you know, defend against the lob and do things like that. But also, you know, you can, it allows you to kind of leave him alone a little bit. He's not a threat to shoot. He's not a threat to like take it to the rack off of the dribble. Um, So I think Rob coming in there and being Rob again, um, and doing the things that he does that really helps them win, blocking shots, being a deterrent in the paint, um, you know, keeping, you know, trying to keep Miami out of there. I, I guess I'll go, Rob. Um, you know, I think if Smart is out, you have to think about Pritchard because he's going to have to play significant minutes and whether or not he's able to knock down shots would play uh, a major role there if he's got to, because he's going to bump up and he's going to have to uh, carry some load here if uh, Derek White gets pushed into the starting lineup because Smart's out. Um, so I guess those two guys. Beyond that, I don't really know, you know, what, what we're, uh, you know, Grant's going to be Grant, White's going to be White. So I guess, I, guess I'll, I guess I'll settle on those guys. Yeah, I mean. How about um, you, John? I think, I think Grant again, man, you know. Yeah. We're, we're going to need, you know, bodies to throw at Jimmy Butler, you know, because um, we can't. I mean, I think Jason Tatum's gonna, you know, draw that assignment a lot of the time. 
Um, but I think, you know, to give Jason Tatum a breather and do what he does on the offensive end, you know, Rob's going to have to go in there and do some stuff. And as you can see, he can, he can, he matches up well against a lot of players, you know, whether, whether it's guards or bigs, you know, he could, he could switch on all of them and, you know, he mm -hmm. can't get bullied out there. And I think he, he's one of those guys that's going to be able to, you know, help out a lot, um, you know, sending out, you know, a wave of guys to, to help out on, on Jimmy Butler and, and Bam as well. Right. Yeah, no, for sure. I, absolutely. That's, um, you know, I certainly think he's going to be one of the X factors. I think another X factor, my, my X factor, I think will be, uh, will be Peyton Pritchard. I think he'll see yeah. more time and more minutes, you know, in, in this series. Um, and, and, and certainly oh, yeah. we'll, we'll get more, you know, opportunities, you know, uh, you know, to be able to, you know, to make, to make plays and, and make shots, you know, you know, when he's out there off, offensively, I think, you know, we'll see yeah. a little bit more from in, from him when, you know, when they put that second unit in, in there. Uh, so I probably, you know, think he's certainly going to have more of an impact, he, he, you know, in this series uh, than he did in the previous uh, one uh, against the Bucks. I, I, I think certainly he's... um. You know, a guy that can be you know, really stretched before can be a really good, you know, not only shot maker, but I feel like he's pretty good ball handling and then also can, you know, can dish to and can, you know, facilitate and, you know, and, and you know, and be able to, you know, create for fathers as yep. well. So I think his ability to be able to do that will, you know, will help them in the, the, in this series, um, you know, with, without question. And definitely Grant is uh, another big X factor to uh, as, as well as Rob. I'm interested to see, um, you know, how Rob looks and how Rob plays because we haven't really seen the yeah, I am too uh, in, in a while. So, so, so that that's the thing yeah. that I'm really gonna be looking out for in in this series to see, you know, if he can actually really match up against you know Bam Adebayo. I mean, we know he's capable of. It's just a matter of him being able to go out there and, you know, and, and do it, you know, physically. And if he's in the, you know, condition to do that, um, you know, with with, with the knees. So, uh, you know, hopefully he is uh, in, in able to do that. And, uh, yeah, and, and hopefully, he, you know, he can stay healthy once, you know, he gets back on the court. And because um, we're definitely going to need him this series and, um, yeah, and uh, you know, and moving forward. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that that's how I feel and yeah. who I feel the, the X factors are um for the Celtics against the Heat. I, I just want to see Rob put somebody on a poster, man. Just just one good time. Yeah. You know? Or like um, an alley oop dunk, those alley -oop something. And and and, and, and somebody them. needs to get Bam back for that block on Tatum, man. You know, and this is a series, like we gotta get him back for that because you know he he's still bragging about that. Um, well, I want to see Tatum dunk on him. Tatum needs to dunk on him. <laughs> he, he gotta do. He gotta this, do this it. Is to get his um, revenge. John, right, this is the revenge series right, yeah. right here for JT and for for the Celtics. Right? It's just time. I to mean, redeem it, it, themselves. I I know you're trying to wrap it, but as far as you know, again, I think the 2020 stuff that people have in their head regarding the Heat. Um, you know, and just how some of those things went. I, I, you know, I do think the Celtics are much better equipped to deal with Bam, as we said. And also, the reality is, Tatum and Brown at that point were not ready for prime time uh, fully. You know, they were. They, you know, they, they're 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 far more evolved players now than they were then. You had Gordon Hayward playing on one leg, the games that he was able to play, and that made a difference. And, you know, he gamed it and he tried. And then Kemba. And, you know, at the end of the day, we kind of know how that all went with uh, with with him. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it, there was limitations. They were limited there. Uh, and even still, I thought they were the better overall team. I think with a full, fully healthy Hayward, they would have been able to win that series. But, again, they're just better equipped to be able to handle some of the things that gave them issues in that series. So anybody having nightmares from the 2020 bubble, I, I don't think a lot of that stuff applies. Uh, John, what were you going to say? No, I mean, that was that was a great breakdown. You know, I was, what I was going to say is we've had you on for some time now, man, and thank you so much for coming on and yeah. having a conversation with us. Um, you know, we we love watching you and the guys, you know, break down every single game. You know, we're, we're actually watching every time, you know, the post game every time, you know. We're just not okay, so that are 
that are in the comments going crazy that are you know making all these crazy comments i love it i love the commenters you know? <laughs> um <laughs> that, that that's my rocket fuel i freaking love those guys they're just freaking i i you know I, but yeah no i appreciate that um, I, I did want to give, I'll give a plug, anybody among your listeners or viewers here um, who don't know about it, it's the, uh, the Garden Report postgame show on CLNS Media. We do it after uh, every single game, something we started doing in the bubble uh, when the NBA resumed. Uh, we've always covered the Celtics. We have reporters who go down, Bobby Manning, Josue Pavone, you know, Jimmy Toscano used to cover a ton of games for us as well. A. Sherrod Blakely, uh, you know, who's a national basketball writer, most recently over at NBC uh, Sports Boston. I worked with Sherrod for, for nine years over there. Um, it's a really good crew and we just like to talk basketball. Some of it's serious, some of it not so serious. Um, it's fun, it's interactive, it's live. So if you haven't, checked it out and you want to please do after every single game check us out it's the uh just you know clns media youtube or our celtics all access channel on youtube as well um or follow us on um you know clns celtics uh twitter and you'll get notifications for when the show is you know about to go live with links and and such so uh, i would love uh if you guys haven't sampled the show give it a give it a give it a shot yeah, please because these guys do a good job you it's know fun. i think fans need to watch that show if you're a big you know Celtic fan and you know and so and I love the team and I'm passionate about the team and also like to hear good analysis and breakdowns from guys that are knowledgeable and know what they're talking about that that's the show that you need to hear you obviously need to hear our show pro fan sports those guys do an exceptional uh, job we're and, trying to be like those guys uh, there's room guys there, there's, level. Right. There's, pl there's, there's plenty of room here okay. there's plenty of room good content is good content so keep doing what you guys are doing i really like the show i love that you guys are passionate fans and you're out there and you're doing it every single week i think it's terrific so um you know for the listeners that you have on here uh, i think you guys have a really good thing going here so um i i appreciate you guys watching uh our stuff i appreciate you having me on <laughs> For sure. Can I get out one last question? Ahead, real, real quick? One last question. Yeah, one, one last question. question. I know we've had, you know, John. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, go for it. Fire away. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, just wanted to ask. I'll, I was just going to, yeah, I'll, I'll ask this. Who, who, <laughs> who, who do you have for your top five of NBA players all time? All time? Yeah. Oh, God, that's a tough one. On the spot. On the spot without giving it a ton of thought. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I just think your automatics are going to be, uh, you know, I, it's just so – I'm not going to – yeah. I'm not going to say anything anybody else isn't going to go. But being from Boston, I'm not going to not include Larry Bird. So I'm going to include Larry Bird with Jordan and uh, and uh, and LeBron as automatics. Then the problem comes down to what do you do with center? And I, I don't know what to do there. I think it's frigging – and it can be anybody. Uh, so that's the tough one. I think the, the, the right answer is probably Kareem. Um, uh -huh. uh, you know, but it's tough. Uh, it's tough there. Uh I, I never really know where to go with that. So I don't. I don't go Bill Russell. I'm sorry. Just don't do it. Really? Even being a Celtic guy, you still don't go nope. Bill Russell. Sorry. Any Not, reason in particular? Too many reasons, and if I say that, I'll probably lose a bunch of fans. But yeah, again, yeah, yeah. let's not put them on that. Yeah, let's not do that. Just not. I. I think he gets. I, I think he gets all the credit for a dynasty at a time where the league was really limited um, and did not have exceptional talent. And the Celtics had all the talent and they're playing with six, five, six, seven hall of famers. And they could basically take the whole season off and be, have punch a ticket to the finals every single year. Uh, and there was like six or eight teams. And just what the, just the competition level, it, it just, it just isn't the same. I, it's hard to compare eras, but at the end of the day, you know, a big man who scored 14 points a game and was terrific at defense. It's just, there's so many dominant players two ways. It's just hard to pick a guy who's specifically so good in one arena over guys who were phenomenal in, in all of them, you know, and there's so many good centers out there. I loved Hakeem. I loved all of these guys. So that well, one's tough. Really and nice. then, I mean, I guess the easy default is magic as the point guard. So if you're going to go five there, um, you could, you could, you could go there, but there's a, 
And what's amazing is the amount of talent in the NBA right now just kind of changes, can change that conversation like that because there's so oh, many yeah. freaking good players now. There's never been this much talent. It's freaking insane. Um, so, you know, you hold on to those because you've always known those guys and those are names and they're tried and true. 10 years from now, 15 years from now, these conversations could be totally different. You're going to have to start talking about, you know, I don't know, is Durant in there? Is this guy in there? Is saying, and again, these, you know, new generation of players. It's a, it really is amazing. It's a great time to be a fan. Um, and, you know, even being a guy who kind of grew up watching, you know, some 80s Celtics and things like that in that time. I'm not one of those guys who's like, oh, in my day. No, man, the players today are friggin' awesome. They're <laughs> friggin' so good. So oh, yeah. it's fun to watch. There's so much star power. Uh, you know, I mean, Luca, my God, is he, is he going to be in a top five conversation in a couple of years? You know, <laughs> you know, it, in, five, in five years, he's in a, you know, I mean, I don't even know. What just, yeah. And he's not even in shape. You know, imagine what happens if he ever takes Crazy himself, shit, right? he even he's takes himself it. seriously. There's so many good players right now. So, yeah. Well, right. You guys think he's a top five player right now? Luke oh, yeah. I actually, one of my preseason predictions when we were talking about stuff on the Garden Report was I said at the end of this year, Luca will be universally considered the best player of the NBA by most, by most universally, by most people. I think, I think he fell a little short of that because, like I said, I think he came in a little soft. He didn't start the year great. His shot wasn't falling early. Uh, but by the end of the year, it's hard to argue that he wasn't a top three player in the league. Friggin' unbelievable uh, what he does. And he, I know he's not a great defender, and I know that's something that's always going to be a knock on him, but he impacts literally every single every possession. Yeah. Every possession. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And, he is, and he's such a problem. There's nobody who can do anything about him. Um, and so I, he's, you know, I, I think he's incredible, uh, you know, and, and he has every, he has the makings of being the best player in the NBA, hands down, if he starts to take himself seriously in his conditioning. And this, not, it's actually really depressing that like two of the better, two of the more exciting young talents in the league, Zion being another one and Luca are having these kind of issues with the, uh, you know, fitness, like just get, get yeah, yourself just right. So good, you know, go out there and dominate, you know, you, the, the people want to see you at, at your highest level, but uh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a tough, it's a, it's a tough question. I, I, I could have gone in a million different directions with a couple of a uh, couple of those guys. And it, I, I can't knock Larry out of, out of an all time thing, whether or not I believe he belongs there. Larry's in there. No, for sure. One last thing on Luca. I think he, is obviously special and, and could honestly has the potential to be like the best international player in like NBA history. Oh I yeah. Think really be guys that. unreal. Guys unreal. Yeah. yeah that, so the, the last thing I wanted. Yeah. To the way they took down uh, Phoenix was, uh, was, I don't think anybody saw that coming. So that's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, that was extremely impressive. That was incredible. Whole thing. Really amazing. Really unbelievable. So yeah. John, um, I hope we can get you back on here. You know, if the Celtics go into the final, I'm down, guys. I'm I'm ready to hang out. Let's chop and, it up, man. And, 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 and hey, J A John Altidore, don't say if it's when the Celtics go to the final. <laughs> I, I think they're going, when? guys. I think they're going. So, uh, you know, again, yep, we're they'll be there. Yeah, yeah, I think they're going. Um, so yeah, game game one Tuesday night. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll have a post-game show. So uh, anybody who wants to check that out, come hang out with us. And, yeah, let's let's do this again if the Celtics – when the Celtics uh, advance to the finals. Go. Oh, man. There All right, you guys. Go. Have a good Thank night, you. John. Thank Take you, care, John. Guys. Appreciate it. Good yeah. seeing you. Good meeting you. Likewise, yeah. Talk soon. Um, all right, cool, guys. Thank you. No it's problem. We'll, we'll be there on Tuesday. I'll be there I assume Tuesday. you guys will do your own intro and rap when I'm out of here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll do that right there. Cool. Yeah, no doubt. We'll, we'll take care of that. But we yeah. appreciate you for coming on once again. Thank you so no, much. No, it was great. I, I Like I said, I love what you guys are doing. I, and please stick with it. Um, you know, We'll do, of course. Uh, you know, I think you are always, uh, you know, like, it, it, you know, part of the, 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 the number one thing is the commitment. I know sometimes people kind of get tired uh and it's like it's a, it's difficult it's a hassle you're trying to chase down guests and what ends up happening a lot of people just kind of fade um yeah. so the the uh, number one thing number one thing you can do is just stay with it yes sir of course yeah. absolutely we'll do yeah i'm yeah. happy to chat with you guys about anything else if you ever have any questions um you know about anything regarding just 
the business of podcasting, the podcast itself. If you want any feedback, any advice, any anything, you just want to ask a question like, hey, why do you guys do it this way? Feel free to reach out. You can use me as a resource. Um, I'm more than happy to kind of, uh, you know, go back and forth with you guys. I, I, it's not proprietary information. I'm happy to share whatever it is that I know that might be able to help you guys. So just let me know. We appreciate of you. Course. Take Thanks you up so on much. that offer for sure. Anytime, anytime, for yeah, real. Appreciate you. Thank you. Definitely. Okay. We'll reach out and we'll talk. Awesome. Thanks, guys. All right. Thank good to meet you. Have a good night. Take care, guys. You too. Take it easy. Go Celtics. Yes, sir, man. That was John Zanis, man. And like he's saying, you could see him literally every time the Celtics, the Celtics play. Um, what he didn't say, he actually covers some of the Patriots stuff as well. So I watch him. I didn't realize know. that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. He covers um, the Pats you know, too. Wow. Yeah, he'd be with um Evan Lazar, you know, breaking down a lot of the Patriots stuff. So you know, he, well, he's, and, um, he's, and Alex Barth? Yep, yep. He's a worker, oh, man. Oh, he's that's a worker. awesome. That, that's so, cool. Um, shout out to, to John. And if you want to follow him on Twitter, it's actually at John um, underscore Zanis. So um, obviously he's a great guy. You know, make sure you guys are tuning into him. Make sure you're following him on, on his platforms. And make sure you're following us on, on our platforms as well. And we're on everything. And that's at ProFan Sports on everything other than um, Instagram, which is at ProFans underscore sports. You know, we're dropping every week. You know, we, we drop content on a daily basis on the social media platform, keeping you entertained. Uh, if you're watching, make sure you're subscribing. Make sure you're sharing. Um, yep. Make sure you're liking, commenting. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe, like the YouTubers like to say. And um, until next episode, man, we'll catch y'all later. Peace out. Have a good one, everyone. See y'all next week. One.